Info Exchange. Let's do this. Info Exchange. This is where we at, everybody. This is where we at. Yes. Topics are not off limits as long as we enlighten and we educate. Info Exchange. The information that will keep us moving, that will keep us going, that will let us make it happen. There's a definitely a need for people to come out and express their knowledge. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abdiel Ben-Levin. Abdiel. Um, tonight, what I want to speak about is um, the esoteric language within the tour. Um, as I've been journeying uh, throughout the tour in the past 20 years, what I found is that most people who pick up the Torah uh, for the very first time, uh, our opinion of it is based upon, number one, an English uh, understanding of it, for lack of a better term, if you will. Uh, the only way to correctly understand the Torah or the teachings of the Bible is to understand it from the language that it was written in. If you cannot speak to uh, <clears throat> the text, by grasping the language that it was written in, you're a little bit lost in the translation, right? You have to study it from the original. Most people who believe to have uh, the view that the Bible is uh, inaccurate are usually people that have no clue about the language. The language is key. And I usually, when I'm speaking to people about the uh, Torah, one of the first things I find is that, first and foremost, they're deficient in the language. So for me, I make that a very big part of the way that I convey uh, my thoughts on the tour. Okay, uh, here we go. What we're looking at for most people who may or may not know, this is Hebrew. This is Genesis chapter one, uh, the original Hebrew in the tour, also including the, what's known as the Nebuchadnezzar, which is the vowels. So I'm gonna read Genesis chapter one really quick, and I'm gonna give a short uh, explanation of the first three verses. So the Torah begins, and by the way, anyone who opens the Torah for you and attempts to explain the Torah to you and does not give you an explanation that is in sync with the literal text, I'm here to tell you that person does not understand Torah, dare I say. Again, you cannot understand the original intent of a speaker if you don't understand the language. Every language that you will go into, you'll find that when you try to come out that language, the language you're trying to get into doesn't even have a word to coin the phrase or concept. Therefore, it's imperative for you to understand the original text. And this is the bestseller in everybody's uh, <clears throat> house, right? This has been the bestseller the world over for how many years now, how many centuries now. So if that idea is important, it's even more important when it comes to this book, a book that is surrounded by so much controversy, so much passion, and so much uh, discussion of truth. So let me again just start right now by saying, I'll say it first in the English, and I'll read it second in the Hebrew. In the English you can read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew it reads, Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shemayim ve'et ha-aretz. The first thing I'm going to draw your attention to is this. It's worded in Hebrew differently than you read it in English. For instance, when you read it in English, you're going to read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When the Hebrew literally says, be reshi, which means in the beginning, the be is a preposition in Hebrew, the letter be, what I'm pointing to right now. It means in or with. It alludes to the transcendence of God and the imminence of God how God both fills all worlds and surrounds us simultaneously at the same time. We refer to it as a divine paradox. The word reshit means beginning, or to start. It's related to the Hebrew word uh, reshona, which is one, and at the base is actually rosh, which is resh alef shin, which means head or beginning. So bereshit means in the beginning. The second word is bara, he created. So if you're paying attention, it actually reads different in Hebrew. It doesn't say, in the beginning, God created. It says, in the beginning, he created and was here. Are we paying attention? I'm going to read that again. Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shemayim ve'et ha-aretz. 
I'm going to read it as it's literally read in Hebrew so that you can see the difference. In the beginning, he created Elohim, Aleph through Tav, Ha Shemayim, Wehem, Ha Aretz. Ha Shemayim is the heavens, and Ha Aretz is the earth. In the beginning, he created Elohim. Are we understanding what that means? I'm pretty sure none of us do. What do you mean in the beginning he created Elohim? Isn't Elohim the Hebrew word for God? Mm. Are you telling me God created God? Mm. No, I'm not telling you that. But what I'm pointing out to you is the idea that the word God is a title. Mm. And this title became manifest with creation. Before or prior to creation, there was no thing in existence but the Creator. The title or word Elohim is only applicable with the creation itself. So the title itself, or Elohim, was created with the advent of creation. The last letter of the word Bereshit is the Tav. The last letter of the word Bara, which is create, is the Aleph. The last letter of Elohim is the Mem. When you take Tav, Aleph, Mem, you spell perfection in Hebrew. We believe that God's word is perfect. The last letter of Bara is Aleph. The last letter of Elohim is Mem. The last letter of Ed is Tav. In Hebrew, that spells Emet. He believes God's word is true. That's the Hebrew word for truth. Conversely, or ironically, the reverse of emet is ma'at. For anyone who doesn't know, ma'at is um, an Egyptian phrase that coins or uh, conceptualizes the idea of justice, truth, and righteousness. And if anyone is familiar with ancient languages on a whole, the first thing you'll notice is that ancient Hebrew is very similar with ancient Egyptian. And I'll prove that to you today. All right, let's get out there. So, in, again, in the original Hebrew, the first sentence of Genesis reads much different than how we understand it. And when you begin to learn how to read it, you begin to grasp the truth that it's trying to convey. First and foremost, the word Torah, contrary to popular opinion, does not mean law. When we speak of Torah, we're speaking about the Creator's teachings. The word Torah comes from the Hebrew verb hara, which means to teach. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the mountain that Abraham was bringing his son Isaac upon, if anyone's familiar with some of the biblical uh, stories, when Abraham was said to uh, prepare his son Isaac for sacrifice, the mountain that he brought him to was known as Mount Moriah in Hebrew. Uh, this word Moriah uh, means the mountain of teaching. Uh, this mountain was later to become the actual site where the Holy Temple of Jerusalem was laid. And we see that as a site where God's teaching emanates. For instance, Isaiah chapter 2 says, At the end of days, all nations shall flow to Jerusalem, and the law of God shall flow from Jerusalem at the end of days. So we always uh, equate that idea with that of teaching. So again, it's imperative to understand and differentiate that the word Torah does not mean law. We have a different word for law. It's similar to the Arabic word deen. In Hebrew, it's dan. Exactly. As a matter of fact, one of the tribes, 12 tribes of Israel, is a tribe by the name of Dan. And the word Dan literally means to judge, and it also means law. But when you want to say law in Hebrew, you're not saying Torah, because Torah literally means to teach. So it's better sheep, bara, Elohim, et hashemaim, et haaretz. Now let me say something really quick and show you too since we have a screen up. I'm going to count the letters really quick for you. Number one, I'll count the words. That's one word. That's two words. That's three words. That's four words. That's five words. That's six words. There's seven words. If anyone knows, I can't open a second page right now because I don't have to tell them time. But Exodus chapter uh, 20, verse 1 begins exactly the same. If anyone knows Torah, knows the Bible, or think they know it, Exodus chapter 20 begins with the words that God spoke all these words saying, and then the Ten Commandments are shared. In Hebrew it's, Why Dabir Elohim et Kal Hadebarim Ha'elein and more. And God spoke all these words saying. That chapter also has seven words, and now we'll see 28 letters. And I'll give you the significance of why it has 28 letters just now. One letter, two, three, four, five, six. 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Seven words in 28 minutes. Hmm. What, is, what is significant about that? Why did I waste the first 10 minutes of my time speaking mm -hmm. about that alone? Am I going to convey something that's true? You're damn right. <laughs> pick up your hands, if you will. Everybody. Just pick up your hands. Hold the palm of your hands real quick. How many joints do you have on each finger? Three. Your joint is what makes your fingers better. You should have three joints on your four fingers and one, two joints on your thumb. Correct? Yes. How much is that? That's 14, 14. on each hand, right? The Hebrew word for hand is yad. When you want to say hand in Hebrew, you say yad. You spell yod, dalet in Hebrew, or if we're speaking English, we would say y-a-d. But the idea again is phonetically, it's yad, all right? Here's how deep the science is with Hebrew language. What Hebrew does is, when we name something in Hebrew, we are identifying with the essence of that thing we're naming. For instance, when you look at the English word dog, why do they call a dog a dog? What does the D mean? What does the O mean? What does the G mean? If I was to go around this room right now and ask you, what does the letter A mean? What does the letter B mean? A means the beginning, I guess, put it on. Literally, the letter, what does it mean? A. It has no meaning. In English. But in other languages, In means. other languages, like, like in Arabic. Uh, so I ask you, in, in Arabic, so yeah, Arabic yeah. is very similar to Hebrew, by the way. We say Aleph, they also say Aleph. Yeah. So what does Aleph mean? The beginning, no. basically. It's the first letter, so you're right in a sense. I don't want to take full credit from you, you're right in a sense. But it doesn't literally mean better. Yeah. It's the first, so I can see how you get the kidding. I get that. But Aleph literally means in Hebrew to teach. It's how we say teach in Hebrew. The word Beit is the Hebrew word for house. The Hebrew word Gimel is where we get a camel from. In the East, they call it a Gamel. You know that, that, that parrot that we all laugh about on the Fruit Loops box, Toucan? That's how you say parrot in Hebrew, Toucan. When we name something in Hebrew, we are identifying with the essence. What is water? H2O, right? Uh, one part hydrogen, two parts oxygen, correct? In Hebrew, H2O or water is mayim, and it conveys the same thought. You spell mayim in Hebrew, mem, yod, mem. The first mem literally means water. The yod is hydrogen, and the last mem is water. Two parts water, one part water. So don't play with Hebrew. It's a very powerful language. Anybody come around and tell you that the Torah is a joke? I'm going to show you a little something tonight that's going to make you make them look very foolish. So again, your hand has 14 joints, right? On one. So if you hold the second one, it's going to be the same, right? 14 and 14 is what? 28. 28. When God created the heavens and the earth, in the book of Isaiah, he says, I created the heavens and the earth, I the Lord, with my two hands. Each of your hand has 14 joints, right? 28, his two hands. How did God create the world? As Jews, we like to get deep, or as Israelites, we like to get deep. We say that God created the universe or the world as we know it with the Torah. What does that mean? Come on. Thou shalt not murder is the foundation of the universe. Well, according to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25, it is. King Solomon or Melech Shalomo said in the book of Mishri or Proverbs, in the 10th chapter, the 25th verse, he says, Zadik Yesod Olam. Righteousness is the foundation of the universe. You want to talk about energy? And positive energy? Righteousness is the foundation of the universe. The very first letter in the Torah alludes to the idea of wisdom. And I'll prove it to you. The word Bereshit in Hebrew uh, is related to the Hebrew word for wisdom. What do you mean by that? Again, 
The first letter is Beit, which means in or with. So in Hebrew, we get D. When you literally read this in Hebrew, the correct rendering is not in the beginning. If you pay attention to Hebrew, you'll understand that this vowel, a zere, makes it with, not in. When you want to say in in Hebrew, the vowel that we would put under it is a, what's called a chamatz. And that would make it in. But if you look at it here, it's a zere. That means that the verse literally is saying with beginning. But what does that mean? Because if we read it like that, it obviously it wouldn't make sense, would it? Would it make sense that the Torah says with the beginning that God, God created the heavens and the earth? Until we use the Torah and we line it up and we get what's known as a, what, a panoramic view of it. We take all of the books of the Torah and we stretch it out for a nice panoramic view that way we can synthesize all those thoughts and understand the whole, right? When we look at the Torah from that point of view, here's the first thing that we're going to see. In the book of Proverbs, King Solomon says over 10 times, Reshit Chachma, Reshit Chachma, Reshit Chachma, Reshit Chachma. In the beginning is wisdom, in the beginning is wisdom. He always equates wisdom with beginning. Anyone knows anything about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you know that wisdom is always first, hence it's the beginning. So when we read the Reshit on an esoteric level, we don't read it as in the beginning, we read it as with wisdom. So with wisdom, God created the heavens and the earth. But what is wisdom? The Hebrew word for wisdom is chokmah, spelled in Hebrew, che, mem, The Hebrew word for wisdom is chakma, which is spelled che, kaf, mem, he. I know most of us here probably don't read Hebrew, so I try to make it as discernible as possible. And you will understand what I'm trying to say. The Hebrew word for wisdom, every letter in the Hebrew language has a numerical equivalent. If anyone knows English, you'll know that the English language comes from the Phoenician language. And the Phoenician language is the language of Canaan, which is the language of Hebrew. In the Hebrew alphabet, the first letter is Aleph, which is one. The second letter is Bet, which is two. The third letter is Gemel, which is three. K is eight. Chaf is 20. Mem is 40. And He is five. So we have 40, we have 20, we have eight, and we have five. When you do the math, you have 73. Remember, reduce all numbers. Seven plus three equals what? Ten. So when we say, with wisdom God created the heavens and earth, in the Hebrew way of thinking, what is our wisdom? The Ten Commandments. In the passage of the Ten Commandments, let's get deep for a second. I heard the brother back there say 613. Everybody knows there's 613 laws in the Torah, right? Six plus one is what? Seven. Seven plus three is what? Ten. In the passage of the Ten Commandments, guess what? In the original Hebrew, there's 613 letters. Hmm. Anybody know that? I'm sure not. Hmm. But the Torah is a joke, right? <clears throat> In Hebrew, we also have something called full gematria. And let me explain what that means. What I just gave you was reduced gematria. I took the numeral equivalent of the consonant, and I wrote it out, and I added the sum, and I gave you the equivalent. What I'm going to do now is spell out each individual letter in Hebrew in full. I'll explain what I mean. This is the Hebrew letter He. It's the eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. When you want to write it as a word, you would spell it like this. He, which is eight, ten, four hundred, or 418. Let's keep that number in mind. I'll end with this thought, by the way, because I know that I'm running out of time. Chaf, which is the second letter, is spelled in Hebrew. Chaf. Pe, which is 20. And E, which is 100. The Hebrew letter Mem is spelled Mem, Yo, Mem, which is 40, 10, 
40, which is 90. The last letter is He, which is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So we don't say, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. We Israelites, we know Hebrew, which means we'll give you a much more in-depth look at what the Creator is trying to tell us than the God picking up the 1611 King James Bible is going to do. We're going to tell you with the Torah God created the heaven and earth. Everybody have a good evening. Mm -hmm.